So hi, uh, I am going to present uh, our effort and work on our APIs and also how it relates to FIMS. And uh, I am currently holding the uh, role as VP of Video Workflows, which handles our MAM product product portfolio and uh, also a lot of related integrations we do within our products. So I wanted to start to talk about our background. I mean, TV2 Norway here <laughs> know our history, but uh, I will tell <laughs> a little bit of uh, uh, where we come from. And also I want to talk about how our vision has been driving us uh, and how our uh, API has been developed against that and really where we are now, where we are now with FIMS. And uh, late, latest now to, to show you how how our APIs has been enabled us to drive uh, innovation within our company. So our background has been, we have been in the MAM business since 98. Uh, we started as many other MAM companies building code uh, for um, softwares to support digital workflows receiving files, creating proxy, handling metadata, automate workflows. Uh, at that time, uh, we were very customer oriented in terms of uh, features, so we grow the, our codex very organically, probably as any other MAM company. But our strategy has always been that we were going to be open. We use open uh, modules, open source as much as we can, but we also are very open in terms of our integrations so we always had an API, a SOAP API, that we enabled to partners, to customers themselves to develop. But at that time we had, really, this is uh, related to how we work in R&D, um, the team doing the SOAP APIs was another group. It was not embedded in the way the people were working. Uh, and I see, we see this other, with other MAM vendors now, they, they want to open up, and it's, it doesn't go with one day, it takes, a long time to change the way R&D works. So, uh, there is a long history. We were previously Ardendo, and we were acquired by Visa-T, a graphics company. Um, and now, of course, the vision was always to, to provide um, solutions for graphics and uh, for video. During the year, we acquired also uh, Scenic, uh, Sports Solutions, Maps, uh, Transcoder Company, uh, Mozart, which is automation in the studio. But we always had uh, a requirement that if we buy a company, it must be to integrate us. It has to be something that we really are close and that uh, enable us to provide a powerful solution. We don't buy a company just to sit there and be a silo company. Uh, company. Uh, but that, uh, with that comes challenges. Challenges as integrating our own products. It's, for me, in that, it was like a man project <laughs> to integrate different uh, products within our own. Uh, there are different ways we were talking, different protocols, different uh, uh, technology platforms, which makes it harder. So uh, when we were acquired by Visa-T, we spent a long time deciding how we are going to build our platform so that we can really enable the products in, uh, in uh, Bergen office to integrate with us, how we can integrate with the sports teams that are developing in Austria and so on and so on. Uh, and it took a long time to, to figure out this platform. Um, but it was completely worth it. <laughs> so I mentioned about the vision. The vision was always to have a platform. Um, already several, several years ago, seven years ago, we had the vision to build a platform uh, so that we can build different solutions on top of this using different modules. But for that, you have to have a modular architecture or else you end up 
having to install your whole stack, which makes it very hard, technology-wise. Um, so now, uh, and this was always the vision, so it was always driving us, and I think what happened to us on the MAM side, uh, I saw it so many times, uh, customers coming to us and saying, yeah, but you are not a MAM uh, company, you are a graphics company. Are you really investing in this? And my response was, uh, we are investing in, in it, but we are not taking any deal. So we are not going to uh, bend backwards and say, uh, say that we have features that we don't have, uh, because in the end that will hit us. So for a long time, we, we, while we were building the new platform, we lost some, some customers. Uh, but in the end, it's paying off now when we see that uh, the platform is, is there ready for, for building new things. It was tough, but uh, the graphics division has help, helped us economically. Maybe if we were a standalone company, maybe it would be much more difficult um, to do this. So now this one is really the, the main uh, platform. Um, in, in some scenarios, it's not really acting as a MAM. In some small scenarios, it's acting yes, as a small service, providing uh, transcoding, for example. Um, but in the typical scenario, it's really a central point to control your assets. Another strategy that we had always was our APIs related to our APIs was we want to enable all APIs openly for everyone to build integrations, to build solutions on top of the platform. And I think now at NAB and IBC, we see more and more partners wanting to use our APIs to build solutions. Because we in the end, we are 600 people in the company. We want to focus on some specific customers that we know very well. But for the other businesses outside broadcast maybe, they can use our platform, but we are not the ones uh, providing the service. So what are we doing with FIMS today? Um, just to give uh, some details about what we have uh, and where we are interacting with FIMS. After rewriting our code, we basically ended up with, even if we had modules before, we are now wrapping every module with APIs. So this is what took time for us to get our R&D uh, groups to actually develop in a specific way, thinking in a different way, document it a different way, uh, so that each of the module can have APIs. Um, so when we got engaged with FIMS, we, we realized uh, there was many of these modules that maps to, to the FIMS uh, APIs. So we have the transcoder, we have the transfer, which is uh, um, and then we have the, the metadata, which is basically the, the assets. So a lot of them were matching very nicely with FIMS, so we realized that the thinking of FIMS and our way of thinking was very, very close. So then we just looked into, okay, so our REST API is pretty rich. It has a lot of functionality, and we looked at the FIMS API, and the calls used in the FIMS are less, less uh, it's a subset of what we do. So we are not, not looking, should we do a separate wrapper? Should we just uh, do a, a subset of this? This is a small thing to, to do, but we just have uh, not decided exactly how we will do the wrapper. But uh, basically what happened then, when we have this, uh, this is just a closer look. Um, so you have the software. This is an example of the transcoder we have. It has our RESTful API, which is open. Uh, so a subset of that it would be the, the FIMS transfer API. Uh, I'm sorry, this is wrong. This is supposed to be transfer. Uh, but uh, basically, basically, uh, we are really wanting to have all of, all of our modules uh, uh, compliant with FIMS. And it's not a lot of work for us to do that because it's really, we have already the calls, we have to just package them and put them in and, and document them and, and put them out there. So what happened when we did the micro, uh, microservices approach, what I was not expecting was that other offices 
we're, we're taking this service and doing uh, the um, doing uh, new features or new uh, solutions within our company. The idea was that we were going to provide it to our to our uh, partners, uh, but a lot of the things happens. You know, the when the developer actually starts using the uh, the service the API, they are cr the creative side and they realize what it can do. Things pop up that we didn't plan. So, for example. The transcoder that we use to create proxy in our in our MAM, um, we can scale down now and put it internally in our VIS engine, who is their uh, video and graphics uh, video server, and it can be a very small scale uh, service that provides proxy for our, some light tools uh, for for someone to browse the material within the the VIS engine. So, and this was very fast. They took it and they did use the APIs and they write it and I think I'm very proud because now at the IBC there is a lot of pods using this one and they're integrating all our different R&D offices. We have seven uh, globally uh, focused on different products. They're using this, this services and doing some cool, cool stuff. So of course, here's the on our ongoing uh, work. We all want to, the, the easiest one will be the transcoder uh, because we just released a new one um, and they will be able to do the, release that soon. And next coming up will be the other ones. Um, the reality is that when we come to a specific project, we realize that the FIMS API are not enough, that they need, for example, growing file support. There's always something missing in the actual FIMS API that uh, but we want to support FIMS, of course, to give uh, the gap of what is needed. Um, so when we started the, in, in MAM, a lot of the challenges that we have is all these integrations. Um, and with, it, with having a stable API, we, we can now do faster integrations than before. Before it was uh, done very closely to the uh, core code, which makes it very slow because we have to wait for a release. Uh, now uh, our different professional services can build plugins, customers can build plugins, partners can build plugins. Uh, that might take you know five days to do instead of orders from R and D, waiting for a release, uh, and so on. This is just an overview of some examples of the APIs. Um, more than the one that are FIMS related. Um, another thing that's important to mention is we, uh, the way we're doing the development on APIs is also time consuming in the sense that we really need to make sure that they are back, backward compatible. So for example, when we provide an API for our interface uh, to enable other, other partners to put an iframe within our uh, main studio interface, we need to make sure that that API does not change so that our partners don't have to rewrite the, the, the systems, uh, the, the integrations they do. So then we have to do it right and we have to think a little bit more in advance to do it, but then it's, uh, it's totally worth it. This is just on a, a little bit of a ex, uh, technical diagram of how, how we're using our APIs within our code. So the last point is just uh, a little bit of a sales pitch <laughs> because I'm, pr I'm very proud about how we're using the APIs now and how it's driving the innovation within our, within our company. Um, so one example is uh, a last-minute press release that we sent out just uh, before uh, Friday. Friday, yeah. So what we're doing here uh, was to integrate our automation system for everything that we are recording. We automatically take that with the graphics, and we can create uh, VOD versions for it automatically. But all of this did not require any R&D. It was someone that took the APIs and did some uh, configuration, some 
so, of course it's some development, but it did not require an R&D department to release something. So it was done in a few days, and it has such a powerful uh, workflow that can provide to, the, to our customers. Another example using our asset API, log track API, conform API. Also another example, uh, we are receiving Opta feeds. We are parsing them, putting them in our what we call log tracks. Uh, and automatically we can trigger conforms. Again, all of that using our APIs. So, to, so the solutions group could actually just take that and build uh, it's also a f in a few days to, to, to get this uh, functionality. So basically, really for me, it's, we see only things growing from now on. It, we had a very steep time to rewrite. Um, we are very engaged with FIMS, so hopefully we'll have our first FIMS uh, API for Transcoder soon. And uh, yeah, do you any any questions? No, thank you.